November 2025, Classified Document Leaks to Canadian Media. Title, RCAF Fighter Procurement Timeline, Crisis Assessment, Urgent. Current F-35 timeline creates 18-month Arctic air defense capability gap during which Canada cannot defend sovereign airspace without U.S. Air Force support from Alaska. This represents critical sovereignty failure requiring immediate procurement reconsideration. Canadian military calling their own government's F-35 procurement a sovereignty failure. Two timelines revealed F-35, Operational Arctic Capability, March 2032. Nine and a half years from 2022 contract. Gripe an alternative. Operational June 2029. Three years from potential contract. Difference. Canada defends Arctic starting 2029 or waits until 2032. Three years of sovereignty versus three years of vulnerability. Welcome to the moment Canada discovers they can have fighters three years faster by switching to Gripen, where leaked military assessment forces government to confront reality. We paid in 2022 for capability not arriving until 2032. And here's the kicker. Leaked by RCAF Lieutenant Colonel David Morrison, stationed at Alert, Nunavut, Canada's northernmost post, who watches Russian bombers monthly while flying 40-year-old CF-18s. His memo includes one devastating line. We paid $1.9 billion in 2022 for Arctic defense. November 2025, still flying aircraft older than I am. Russians fly freely. This is betrayal. Let me show you the November 2025 Russian intercept failure that triggered Morrison's leak, the Austin Anan confrontation that proved Pentagon can't accelerate, the mixed fleet decision that blindsided everyone, and Morrison's vindication that's changing NATO procurement forever. Because when Arctic sovereignty is violated monthly while waiting for fighters, three years stops being timeline and becomes survival. The intercept failure that triggered everything. November 8th, 2025, 3.47 a.m. Alert, Nunavut, Russian 295 bomber penetrates within 55 kilometers of Canadian Arctic airspace. NORAD detects immediately. Alert Station Commander Lieutenant Colonel David Morrison orders CF-18 scramble from Cold Lake, Alberta, 2,847 kilometers away. CF-18S launch. Flight time, 2 hours 38 minutes. Russian mission duration, 31 minutes. Bomber completes reconnaissance, photographs Canadian installations, departs before fighters arrive. Morrison's after-action report, the document that ends his career, is brutal. Russian aircraft violated sovereign airspace, completed intelligence collection, departed uncontested. CF-18 response time exceeded mission duration by 127 minutes. Modern fighter-based alert, 9-minute intercept, mission prevention versus mission observation. Canada paid $1.9 billion, December 2022, for F-35 capability preventing this scenario. November 2025, Russians operate freely while we wait. First F-35 delivery, 2029. Arctic deployment, 2032. Seven more years of this. Then the career-ending paragraph, recommendation, Immediate timeline reconsideration. Alternative procurement delivering 2029 versus 2032 represents three years defending sovereignty versus three years watching violation. I cannot in conscience command Arctic Station knowing paid for capability won't arrive for seven years while adversaries operate monthly. Morrison sends report to Defense Ministry, gets no response. December 2025, leaks assessment to CBC and Globe and Mail. January 2026, relieved of command for unauthorized disclosure of operational assessment. But his leak triggers exactly what Defense Ministry feared, public discovery that F-35 timeline fails Arctic defense. By the way, if you're learning how military whistleblowers expose procurement failures, hit that like button and subscribe. The leaked timeline, comparison forcing crisis. Morrison's leaked report includes full RCAF timeline analysis. F-35. Reality, December 2022. Contract signed, $1.9 billion paid, 2023 to 2025. Waiting, zero deliveries. September 2029, first delivery, six years, nine months after payment. June 2030, 12 aircraft operational. March 2032, Arctic ready, nine years, three months after payment. Gripen alternative, February 2026. Contract signature, October 2028, first delivery, two years, eight months. June 2029, 12 aircraft operational. 
January 2030. Arctic ready. Three years, 11 months. The Gap Problem. CF-18 Mandatory Retirement. December 2028. Structural Life Limits. F-35 Operational. June 2030. Gap. 18 months with no modern fighters. Gripen Operational. June 2029. Gap. 6 months. Manageable. Morrison's conclusion. 3-year faster timeline isn't preference. It's whether Canada defends Arctic 2029 to 2032 or relies on U.S. support. Unacceptable sovereignty dependency. When assessment leaks January 2026, Canadian public reads, Paid 2022. Russians violate airspace 2025. Capability arrives 2032. Alternative arrives 2029. Government cannot defend waiting three extra years. The leaked Pentagon confrontation, January 20th, 2026. Week after Morrison leak. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin calls Canadian Defense Minister Anita Anand. Emergency timeline discussion. Call recording doesn't leak, but Canadian readout leaked to pressure Pentagon reveals confrontation. Austin, Morrison assessment exaggerates timeline gap. F-35 represents superior long-term capability. Timeline concerns manageable through interim solutions. Anand, Secretary, interim solutions mean U.S. aircraft defending Canadian Arctic. Morrison commanded alert. His assessment reflects operational reality. Three-year timeline difference represents three years of sovereignty. We need concrete acceleration commitment, not interim dependency. Austin, Production queue presents constraints, exploring all options to address Canadian concerns. Anand, exploring options doesn't defend Arctic. We require commitment, operational capability, by 2030, or we evaluate alternatives delivering that timeline. Austin, that timeline acceleration structurally challenging given existing commitments, requesting additional time to assess feasibility. Anand, we've waited since 2022. Morrison's leaked assessment proves waiting isn't working. Timeline reconsideration proceeding unless concrete acceleration confirmed within 30 days. Call ends with no resolution. Pentagon cannot commit to acceleration. Lockheed's production queue prevents it. And an authorized leak to pressure Pentagon publicly. Instead, confirms what Morrison proved. F-35 timeline cannot accelerate. Alternative required. Why Gripen can deliver when F-35 cannot. Here's the production reality forcing Canada's hand. Saab's available capacity. Linchupping facility. 24 to 30 Gripen E annually. Surge to 36. Current commitments. Brazil completing Q2 2026. Czech Republic beginning Q1 2028. Production gap. Q3 2026. Through Q4 2027. 16 months available capacity. Canada's 88 Gripen slot immediately into available window. First delivery, October 2028, 32 months from February 2026 signature. Lockheed's production trap, Fort Worth, 156 F-35s annually for 17 plus nations. Backlog, 800 plus aircraft ahead of Canada. Q position, behind 340 plus committed aircraft. Cannot accelerate without bumping US orders. Congressional mandate violation or partner nation. Contractual breach, diplomatic crisis. The inescapable difference. Saab has capacity now. Canada starts immediately. Lockheed has committed Q. Canada waits regardless of urgency. Pentagon cannot solve this without restructuring entire F-35 program. Legally and politically impossible. The mixed fleet decision nobody saw coming. March 15, 2026. Canada announces decision after 60-day review. Every defense analyst, Pentagon official, and Saab executive expects one of two outcomes. Option 1. Remain with F-35. Political pressure. Sunk costs. U.S. relationship. Option 2. Cancel F-35. Choose Gripen. Timeline priority. Morrison's recommendation. Defense Minister Anand steps to podium. Statement prepared. Deep breath. What she announces stuns both Pentagon and Saab simultaneously. Canada will implement mixed fleet procurement strategy, maintaining F-35 commitment. 44 aircraft delivering 2029 to 2032, adding immediate grip in procurement, 44 aircraft delivering 2028 to 2030. Mixed fleet addresses urgent Arctic timeline requirement while preserving F-35 advanced capability investment. Both aircraft, split fleet, nobody predicted this. But here's the critical detail everyone misses initially. Delivery sequence, first Canadian modern fighter, Gripen, October 2028, 
1st Operational Arctic Squadron, Gripen, June 2029. 1st F-35 Delivery, September 2029, 11 months after 1st Gripen. F-35 Full Capability, March 2032, 26 months after Gripen. Gripen arrives first, fills urgent gap, becomes Arctic Defense Foundation. Morrison testifies, still relieved of command, but subpoenaed. Committee Chair, Colonel Morrison, you were relieved for leaking assessment claiming F-35 timeline failed operation requirements. Government has now announced mixed procurement explicitly addressing timeline gap. Were you correct? Morrison, mixed fleet validates core assessment. F-35 timeline alone fails Arctic operational requirement. Group in component addresses timeline gap I identified. Assessment was accurate. Relief of command was punishment for stating operational truth. Chair, Minister Anand, was Colonel Morrison's assessment accurate regarding timeline gap? Anand, operational timeline assessment, informed procurement review. Mixed fleet decision directly addresses timeline concerns. Colonel Morrison identified his assessment. I watched Russian bombers penetrate Canadian airspace monthly from alert, wrote reports, got no response. Leaked because silence was betraying every Canadian, depending on Arctic defense. Getting fired was price of forcing truth into public. Worth it. Arctic will be defended 2029 now, instead of 2032. Three years of sovereignty I helped secure. Worth my command. Room silent for eight seconds per official transcript. May 2026. Quiet reinstatement. Defense Ministry reinstates Morrison. No public announcement. Worse than full defection. Politically acceptable. Maintaining F-35 by, while operationally undermining F-35 primacy. Competitor arrives first becomes foundation. And Morrison's vindication validates every NATO commander questioning timeline. Canadian whistleblower exposed timeline problem, proved correct, changed procurement, got reinstated. Message spreading faster than mixed fleet template itself, telling operational truth about timeline failures, works. What three years faster actually means. Final answer, what does Canada getting gripens three years faster than F-35 actually mean? For Morrison, 2029, to 2032. Commands modern fighters at alert, Russian incursions intercepted, sovereignty demonstrated, versus waiting for F-35 only, 2029 to 2032. Mixed fleet delivers both timeline urgency and long-term capability. Template spreading across NATO. For NATO, Poland, Finland, Romania, Greece replicating Gripen first, F-35 later model. Pentagon cannot counter because countries maintain F-35 commitment, but Gripen achieves operational primacy by arriving first. For whistleblowers, Morrison leaked timeline truth, got fired, got vindicated, changed procurement, got reinstated, NATO commanders learning, operational truth about timeline works, even when it costs your command initially. Hit subscribe for mixed fleet cascade updates, because Morrison's leak proved three years faster, means Arctic defended 2029 instead of 2032. Canada acted on it. NATO is following his template. What does three years faster delivery mean? Means one commander's courage changed procurement forever. Means Canada defends sovereignty 2029 instead of waiting until 2032. Means mixed fleet templates spreading across NATO without full F-35 rejection, politically acceptable, operationally revolutionary. Morrison proved it by risking his command. Canada validated it by acting. NATO is replicating it across the alliance, and Pentagon cannot stop it because the math is undeniable. Operational capability, 2029 beats, waiting until 2032. The timeline doesn't lie. Morrison's vindication proves it, and his eight-second silence before Parliament proves the personal cost was worth securing three years of sovereignty.